Hello, today we're going to be taking a look at Ubuntu 11.04's Alpha 1. This just released earlier today, December 2nd, 2010, and there are several changes from the Maverick version that we had before, Ubuntu 10.10. .10. The most notable, of course, is that on the default desktop, if you have 3D acceleration enabled, you are greeted by the Ubuntu Unity interface, even on a desktop, not just on a netbook. Of course we knew this was coming, and it is still only partially implemented. I do look forward to seeing where they go with it, because like I said, it's not complete yet. We'll get into that here in just a second though. Now when you first start looking at this, this looks very similar to the Unity that we had in Ubuntu 10.10. .10. You've got the launcher on the left hand side, you've got the button in the upper left hand corner, the global menu, the system taskbar tray and all of that fun stuff, notifier applets and the me menu, everything that you'd expect to get from the Unity Netbook Edition, but now it's on a desktop, in this case a laptop. However, some changes have been made. Some of the icons here on the side, there aren't quite as many by default. You've got the ability to drag them around, though you cannot rearrange them at this point. And you'll probably notice when I move around over them, there's a little bit of a flicker. That's not actually showing up on the screen where I'm looking at it. It's an issue with Record My Desktop and FFmpeg and all of the back ends that I can tell. Really not that big of a deal, just a little bit of an annoyance. Of course, the default icons you've got over here on the left, you've got the File Manager, you've got the Firefox 4.0 Beta 7, the absolute newest one available at the moment. You've got Tomboy Notes. Record My Desktop is showing up because I'm running it, but it is not one of the default launchers. You've got the Workspace Switcher that, when clicked, will take you to the Compiz plugin, the Expo plugin. I believe that's what it's called. It shows all of your available workspaces. And you've got your trash icon, which cannot really be moved or touched or anything except for just opening the trash. Whenever you do open a new application, like I said, when you open Record My Desktop, it creates a new icon. If you right-click on that, you can control certain aspects of it. You can even pin it to the launcher so you can open it again in the future. If you do not want something on your launcher, if you wanted to remove something, you can right-click on it and go to Pin to Launcher and uncheck that, and it goes away. And if you didn't notice, that animation was actually very smooth, a little bit smoother than I expected, most likely due to the idea of moving to the Compass back end. I believe they've moved to it entirely at this point. It is still very early, very experimental, but Unity is a plug-in for Compass at this point. However, one thing they have not quite finished yet, and this is still a work in progress, if you click on the Ubuntu button, Instead of getting the Unity full screen applications list that's zeitgeist powered and looks very nice and very swanky, you're greeted with the applications list. Now, like I said, still unfinished, still a work in progress, but this is everything that you're going to have to work with at a glance. For example, if we wanted to open something about GNOME, you just double click it. We are of course running Nautilus, so it's just opening items within a Nautilus window. While we're in here, you'll notice we're running GNOME version 2.32.1, built on November 17th. That is, as far as I know, the latest version of GNOME 2.32, and possibly the last version of the 2 series. 2.32.1 is supposed to be the very last one done before they move on to GNOME 3. Now if we go ahead and look on through the rest of this menu, you see a lot of stuff that you're probably familiar with. You've got Brasero, you've got your Bluetooth calculator, CD-DVD creator, computer janitor, not a huge fan of that, but if you like that, wonderful. You do now have the GNOME Control Center by default. That is extremely handy. If you're not familiar with it, you've got a load of settings that you can change in here. Moving on down the list, we've got a couple of items in here that probably shouldn't be showing up, but again, we're not going to be using this long term, so it's not a big deal. As we move on down, we've got Firefox, we've got GBrainy, uh, login screen info. This one, very helpful. When they moved to a newer version of GDM a few releases back, they removed the ability to automatically log in and show the list of users and all those things. So very handy to have this back. Again, perhaps I've missed that in the previous releases, but I don't recall that being in the recent ones. As we move on down, we've got the multimedia system selector. This might have come when I installed the Ubuntu restricted extras. If you do not have it already, it is very nice to have to be able to select your default output and input for video and audio. But we're using Pulse Audio, not terribly useful at that point. It's got OpenOffice, the full suite. It's got Python versions 2.6 and 2.7. We've got Rhythmbox. We've got a root terminal showing up by default. And of course, the bevy of other things that come pre-installed. Now you'll notice if we go into the terminal, just to take a quick look, uname-r, we've got the kernel version 2.6.37-7. That should be the latest version of the kernel. I believe that's RC4. 
If it's not, do feel free to correct me in the comment section below. Very nice to see them, including the latest kernel though. And the last thing I would want to look at in here is the Ubuntu One and Ubuntu Software Center. If we go into Ubuntu One, this looks just the same as it did in 10.10. .10. It does pop up and ask you to create your Ubuntu One account by default. That's to be expected. And if we go into the Software Center now, it looks very similar to what we've gotten used to in the past. We do have software recommendations at this point, probably based on the things that I've installed. If I go in here, we see we've got a lot of media players available. In addition, if we go into the Git software list, we have the for purchase and now the independent software vendors. For purchase has nothing available yet. Independent has the daily journal application that you can install. If we go in and take a look at that, it says it's completely free. This might be setting the framework for the pay what you want applications in the future. But other than that, it's pretty much the same standard software center we know and love. We have the featured software and the what's new section and the categories, all the things that we are familiar with. So that's pretty much the Unity part of Unity. We of course still have the GNOME desktop background changing. If you want to right click the background, you can change that. It comes with the standard Ubuntu 10.10 .10 wallpaper. They may change that before 11.04, you never know. We've got the global menu here across the top that does change based on the application that you're running. You see here at the moment we are running Nautilus by default. Uh, it does change if you open something else, except for something like Firefox. For example, if I open that, the global menu actually disappears at this point. The menu is here at the top of the browser. Now you'll notice Firefox 4 Beta 7. It's got some significantly different things about it. If you want to know more about Firefox 4, please do ask. I can make a video about it. We've got tab grouping and just a lot of, a lot of new things about it. Uh, so it is definitely worth taking a look at. Cannot wait for Firefox 4 to be available. But the last thing that I would like to talk about, here in the upper right hand corner we do have all of our system tray type icons. We've got the network icon which is now network managers integrated into the notify area. We've got the Bluetooth icon. You may or may not have this. If you have a Bluetooth device, it will show up. You've got the battery icon. Did not show up by default. If you go into the preferences, I told it to always display the icon because I'm running on a, on a laptop. Uh, you've got the sound icon. Again, you've got your sound preferences. If you were running something like Rhythmbox, of course it will pop up and show you what's running, what's playing within Rhythmbox. You've got the two sections of the me menu. Set up your chat, mail, and broadcast accounts and the me menu with your status and being able to broadcast all of these different things. You've got the calendar which has changed just a little bit. Now they're not showing the date on the main panel by default. I'm guessing that's just because the panel is sort of lacking in space. And it doesn't appear that anything's configurable at this point. And the last item on our menu is the power button which has the whole shutdown logout screen. Now the one thing to keep in mind is if you are not running the 3D drivers for whatever your graphics card is, be it Nvidia, ATI, Intel, whatever, then you are going to be greeted by the default GNOME 2.x interface. That's the GNOME panel at the top and the bottom, the traditional desktop environment you're used to. If you do have those drivers enabled, by default the desktop edition, and I'm doing that in air quotes, is the Unity interface that you see before you. But that does bring up the point where you do have the option to select between the Unity interface and the classic interface that you are accustomed to. But that's all I've got for you today. That's all I've got to say about Ubuntu 11.04's Alpha 1. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below, and keep in mind this is an alpha, so I would not suggest running it on any sort of production machines. But that's all. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.